All right, so we're checking out the GEPRC Tiny Radio in this video. This is an Express LRS radio in the uh, budget class, and it's a rectangular shaped radio. So for those of you guys that don't like the um, gamepad style radios like the Jumper t light, you might like this one a little bit better. And, uh, you know, this is a $60 radio here, so if you get the radio by itself, it's $60. And if you get the combo version, which is what I have here, you get a case and that adds an additional $8. Now this is the manufacturer's suggested retail price. If you buy it at a different store, um, the prices will vary. And uh, so whatever store you go to, uh, you'll have to check the link and the prices might be different at the time you watch this video. Um, I'm not going to go super in depth into uh, all of the functions on this radio because it's a pretty simple radio and the manual covers most of the stuff in pretty good detail. There's also a firmware up update guide for the radio as well as the internal module. So I'm not going to cover all that stuff in this video. So if you uh, check the links in the video description, I'll have links to the manuals and the download stuff in the video description. If you read the manual and are running into some trouble and don't understand something, let me know at that point and leave your question down there with, uh, you know, I read blah, blah, blah in the manual, but something's not working right. Could you help me? Then uh, I'll try and help you out. But if it's just like a generic question and it doesn't look like you'd watched the video or read the manual, usually I'm not really sure where to help people in that kind of stuff. So just letting you know ahead of time, you may not hear back from me if you leave such a question. Also, you know, this is a budget radio, $60. Uh, there's, you know, quite a few in this sort of price range. I think the uh, Light Radio 3 um, standard version is like around that same price. Again, prices vary. There's also the Light Radio 3 Pro, which is a little bit more. It's about $80, I believe. And then there's the T-Lite, which is also around $80. Um, and then if you move up to the uh, TX-12, this is the Mark II. And just for size comparison, here's what they look like side by side. This one's much bigger and heavier. And this one's about $100. And then next to the Zorro, this is what it looks like. And this is about $100 as well, maybe a little bit more or less. So, you know, um, it is what it is, right? It's a budget radio. You get what you pay for if you're expecting high quality um, build with OpenTX, EdgeTX, and all kinds of support. Uh, this isn't it. You know, move on, try something else like the Radio Master Zorro or the TX-12 Mark II. But if you're looking to save, you know, 40, 50 bucks or so, and uh, want a radio that can do Express LRS, um, you know, this is maybe a good option. There's also the Light Radio 3, which is a gamepad style radio. This is very basic. Here you have you know, your two gimbals. You got a little lanyard hook here. You have your switches. There's a uh, two position switch here. The rest of these are three position switches. You get your 2.4 gigahertz antenna here. This is removable. Uh, this radio does come in a 915 megahertz version. You can see this is an SMA antenna. The pin is on the antenna side. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking to get this in Express LRS uh, for 915 megahertz, they sell one as well. I don't have that one, never tested it, so I, can, I can't answer any questions about it, but I believe it's the same shape as this. And here's what it looks like in the back. You can see it runs uh, 2S in, uh, battery voltage input. Got your setup and bind buttons here in the back here and on top. Got your USB-C port, that's for charging the battery. You got your PPM port there for trainer and this is your power button so in the manual there's a uh, various um, key combinations here for binding for turning on the Wi-Fi uh, for changing your power output which why by the way this goes uh, 100 milliwatts 250 milliwatts and 500 milliwatts this is one of the I think the only one in this price range in the budget class that will go up to 500 milliwatts but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, this door in the bottom here is kind of a pain in the butt to get open. Alright, so getting this door off of here is not super easy. 
It's not a great design, but it has a little 2S balance lead plug and it comes with the tray here for an 18650 setup here for two 18650 cells or for 2S voltage, but you can see here it does not have the middle wire for balance charging. So while you can charge this via USB-C, be aware when you put in two 18650s in here, if you have a bad cell, for example, that's going to be very bad because what it will do is uh, you'll end up with a cell that does not charge and then the other cell will take all the charge and it will overcharge. It'll get very hot and because um, it this doesn't stop charging until it hits like the threshold voltage, which is 8.4 volts. So be aware that that is going to be a problem if you have mismatched cells or a bad cell. If you have two, two good cells, probably will be okay. Um, I, would, I didn't have any issues there, even putting hooking up this LiPo here and it was charging fine uh, it's because this LiPo is good and um, basically the, the voltage will come up on both cells evenly or fairly evenly if the cells are in good condition um, and then I'll stop. But if when you have a bad cell, then you have some problems. So you can run this off of a LiPo which is what I did here, or you can use the included battery holder. Now regarding the outer power on the Express LRS internal module, uh, at the 500 milliwatt max, I did use the um, Immersion RC power meter to check the power output. After I left it on for about 10 minutes and let everything kind of settle, and I was getting around 363 milliwatts maximum power. I did forward that to uh, GIPRC. They didn't seem to be too concerned about that. They did show me their uh, picture of the Immersion RC or their Immersion RC power meter showing about 410 milliwatts of output power on the 500 milliwatt setting. So I don't know if that was uh, right away, if they measured it right when they turned it on, or if it was uh, 10 minutes later or 30 minutes later, they didn't tell me, but that's what they got. Of course, uh, your, your mileage may vary with the Immersion RC power meter. Some people say it's not very accurate or reliable. Um, and oftentimes people look at my results and like, wow, that's either too low or that's either way too high. So take it with a grain of salt. Those, those are, those are my readings from my meter. You know, your mileage may vary, but the point is, I think that the, uh, the reason you don't see a lot of 500 milliwatt internal modules on these radios, especially smaller ones is because of the heat dissipation issue. Um, I, I think on the. Uh, Jumper T Pro, it does have a big heat sink for their one watt module and does get pretty hot. Um, but I think with this design here, I didn't open it up. I, I did see some pictures online um, and it looked like the module didn't have any kind of heat sink or anything like that. So it gets very hot. And when it gets hot, it starts dropping packets and the power output drops. So there's something to be aware of, even though it says it's 500 milliwatts. For me, it was more like 363 milliwatts. But um, I didn't have any issues with fail safes. I didn't push it to uh, its limits, of course. It's, I, it's a $60 radio. I'm not going to be taking uh, my Camara 7 Pro. That's, you know, that's probably $1,000 of equipment on that quad. I'm not sending that, you know, 15 miles out with this radio. So if you guys are like, oh, you should do that test. Um, no, thanks. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Now to configure this radio, there's a Windows program called Tiny Radio Configurator. It's kind of similar to the way the Beta FPV Configurator works for its radios. So you can change things like uh, reversing your channels, sub trims, um, just some basic stuff. Not really a whole lot, really isn't anything you can do with this radio really. There's no OpenTX, there's no HTX on here in terms of the firmware. You can do firmware updates if they happen to come out with them. Uh, but I'm told that the one that's on the website is one that's actually on here. They haven't, they haven't done any firmware updates at all. Didn't seem buggy. Didn't have any like weird problems where like uh, you know, I had dropouts or um, the radio just randomly just like shut off or anything like that. So the firmware seems to be fine. You know, obviously it does what it, do it does. What it does. It's very limited in, in, in its functions and it seems to be fine within those limitations. So to do the uh, firmware update for the radio, you use the USB-C port here. You can't use this for simulator use. You have to use the um, internal Express LRS module and, and put it into Bluetooth joystick mode. And to do that, there's a button combination you have to use, which is in the manual. So um, I'll, I'll 
I don't remember it offhand, but if you want to turn it on, it'll turn on the uh, Bluetooth um, joystick function, and then you can connect that to your computer and use that for simulators. Also, for doing the Wi-Fi um, update for the internal Express LRS module, it, it only works right now via Wi-Fi. It's like it's using some DIY firmware target, and, and it is in the Express LRS configurator, and I was able to. Uh, flash the latest version to I think 2.51 with my bind phrase on here that worked fine But it only I was only able to do it over Wi-Fi now if you do run into the problem where um, if for some reason there's a some, some sort of Wi-Fi issue or the the Wi-Fi update fails and you've bricked the uh, internal module firmware then you have to open up the radio and there's a pro procedure outlined in the so you have to, when you download the um, tiny radio configurator software, there's also a manual in there for doing the um, Express LRS firmware updates. And as part of that, there's the recovery procedure where you have to open it up and then do some soldering. There's some photos on that manual. Basically, you don't, you don't want to brick it. You know, it's kind of a hassle to fix it if you do but it, it isn't permanently broken you are able to recover but it is a it's sort of a process to figure that out and by the way that manual with the um uh, express lrs firmware update instructions the first half of it is all in chinese so if you're like oh the manual's in chinese well go keep on scrolling down towards the second half of the manual and then you'll see the english manual this is basically the same photos but everything's in english and you'll you'll see it if you run into that problem so they have documented all this stuff it's just that it isn't that easy, so I'd recommend being careful on how you do your Wi-Fi updates and make sure that you don't brick the internal module when you do the Wi-Fi update. Okay, so overall the build quality on this is about right for this price range, you know, around $60. It is not um, amazing. It's not terrible. Um, it feels very light, even with two 1860s in here. Uh, the material here in the back is not very it's kind of like a rough material but it's not very grippy you know so uh, you know like with any radio it really is going to depend on the pilot some people are going to like it some people are going to hate it in the way it feels in the hand i don't have any issues with this i'm not particularly fond of rectangular radios but it didn't seem to bother me too much um yeah i don't have a lot to say because i i'm not a big fan of taking the radios in general but it is a nice compact size and pretty lightweight it didn't feel like it was too uncomfortable the gimbals in this one are potentiometer gimbals of course at the, in this price range no hall sensor gimbals they are they don't have a lot of jitter as far as i can tell it looks okay the feel of the gimbal it feels about right for this price range um there there's like little kind of creaks and stuff in here as you move it on. it doesn't feel super smooth but it kind of reminds me of the first time a gen a beta fpv gimbals that came out on the original light radio like two years ago this is so maybe slightly better than that but a little bit worse than the second gen beta fpv gimbals that replaced those so um yeah for those of you that have tried different radios you probably know what i'm talking about if you haven't, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about here. The but, but bottom line is it's kind of a, it's definitely on the low end. It's budget. They work. I was able to fly pretty much everything without any issues. Um, it's just that they don't feel that great in terms of like build quality and the feel in terms of the springs and then like the the mechanic the mechanics of it. It's you know you can kind of feel it grinding a little bit. A little plastic. It's all plastic. So in terms of the gimbal construction and all that, it is definitely on the budget low end side, but it does the job. Didn't have any uh, failures or jitters or weird stuff. I didn't have to do any kind of joystick calibration or anything like that. The, um, you know, you're limited to these four switches. Of course, this one here has to be a two position switch because it's for arming and you can't move these around, but you can reverse the channels if you want. But yeah, you know, um, not really a whole lot to say. It's you know about right for sixty dollars. It's not terrible, but you know you you get your pay for here, and it will do the job. It's just that it's not you know it's it's probably a you know good beginner first radio. If you're starting out, you don't want to spend a lot of money. I know there's a lot of guys out there like oh you know 
just go out and spend a thousand dollars on your Futaba right off the bat. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that don't agree with that and don't want to do that. And they want to spend as little as possible and get into flying without spending a ton of money and then have the option of upgrading later if they feel like it. I think that's kind of the way most people get into the hobby is they buy the entry, entry level stuff, see what they like, kind of, you know, try stuff out and then move on, you know, move, move on to something a little bit nicer a little bit later. So, you know, will it work? Yeah. Well, how, how, will, how will this hold up after a year? Hard to say, probably be okay, but you know, I'm pretty sure most people will buy this and then probably within six months a year, depending on how much you fly, they're either going to move on to something a little bit better or they're going to quit the hobby. That's how usually things go with these sort of entry level stuff. Okay, talk long enough about this one. Link's down in the video description for everything. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.